Shvatim. And we're talking about abstinence. Uh, it says, So, guys, one important part of become whole, becoming holy in Judaism is if, I'm sorry, every physical pleasure that comes your way, you just, like an animal, partake in it, you're not considered a holy person. And like I said many times, every time we make a blessing, we say, Asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav, right? The goal of every mitzvah is to make us holy. Holy means what? Separate. So, gluttony and satisfying every one of your nerves, nerve endings, God forbid, like an animal, is the antithesis of holiness. How do we, what are the, the concrete steps that we take to become parush? You have to see how dangerous. I mean, last week our class was that it's heartbreaking. You know, sometimes when you know too many things about too many people as a rabbi of a big a leader in the community, how many people have overdosed and died from drugs? You know, it's kind of like a lot of these um, different pleasures we have. In the beginning, it seems very innocent, right? I'll take the drug once. But in the end of the day, you become addicted and it becomes dangerous. So the step number one is to know that these innocent um, addictions could lead to very terrible, terrible results. And, and the worst case scenario is death. It says, unfortunately, our body is also addicted. You know that... Um, we have an addictive body. Yeah, yeah, we have an addictive body. Which means, and especially according to your DNA, which means some people's genetics are predisposed to become alcoholic. Which means some people could have a beer, but doesn't mean that their body's going to crave it. They, they know how to be in moderation. But some people, it's so dangerous for them because they're... Um, uh, they want to, they'll drink once and then they can't, they can't stop. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it says, he says, and, and that's why you have literally billions upon billions of dollars of alcohol. Uh, anonymous, the pharmaceutical companies to detox people. My own brother-in-law in Baltimore owns three uh, rehabs for people that need to get off their heroin addiction. And God knows. What are those pills that every, that's destroying America? Fentanyl. Fentanyl and all these and the painkillers and... That's very common right now. So right. he and I'm it's it's you know that by, by the way, you know what this is the mother of all sin. How did Satan bring death into the world? He showed that Eve, the fruit, the forbidden fruit is very juicy and like it's Hollywood. Drug. It's like you know, it's it has these flashing neon drug, you know, and she became mesmerized that oh, you know, you, you know, us human beings. Unfortunately, God, we don't know how many pro, uh, permitted fruits that were in the Garden of Eden, but I would imagine it was in the hundreds of thousands. But we always want to go to that one that is off limits and brings death, you know? And it's it's important Kabbalistically. Rav Sadaq Cohen explains this in the deepest echelons of Kabbalah. That's why kosher is so important. Because death and destruction that we got kicked out of Gan Eden, essentially we ate a forbidden, a non-kosher fruit, right? God said, this tree is not kosher. Don't eat it, right? And um, perhaps in our modern halacha, I was going to give a fascinating class, actually. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a whole... Somebody that wants to do tshuva... Right? It's a big machlokas between Rav Moshe Feinstein and Rav Yaakov Ruderman and different poskim. If a person wants to take the first step to become kosher to God, should he first keep Shabbat or first keep kosher? Kosher. Kosher. So there's different things, but you, you see that. Both. No, no. We, we, a person has to take it step by step. Because if you take too much. Keeping you, kosher is so hard. Exactly. So. I, I just want you guys to keep... There, there are people that say that um, kosher. And like we said, 
אבל כשהתברר אל האדם הטוב ההיא כוזב לגמרי. But once you understand that all these drugs and physical pleasures are really empty, they're empty balloons. Guys, I'm sorry to tell you, I have to say this even though it's distasteful to say it. Um, maybe I shouldn't say it. But sometimes in shul, people sponsor and different synagogues or outreach or Jewish organizations on a given month spend sometimes even in, in the tens of thousands of dollars to give good food on Shabbat and so people come. And then you see some people that are so gluttonous, they take a whole tray of sushi, I right? What? No, and they throw it away. Oh. Which means, so, it's a sickness actually. Guys, there comes a point in time where there's a reason that our, our stomachs have a certain limit, you know? I, I just want to let you know that the vast majority of sickness, any type of sickness, you name it. It's by eating. E yeah, it's by eating. Or eating. Easy, no, either stress, right? But, but people that are stressed, they stress, they eat a lot. Yeah, exactly. So it's connected. But I I'm telling you, there's this documentary... It's unbelievable. Food is a drug. Yeah, food is a drug. Exactly. So it says that once you get enlightened, guys, like the Tanya says, our whole mission in this world is to overcome our nefesh Bahamas, right? We can't be an animal, right? You have to ask, you, you have to look yourself in the mirror every day and say today, do I want to act like an angel or animal? It's up to you. Believe me, I have a, a, a cousin Literally, I've become his free life coach. And sometimes I, I, I think I had to retire because it was taking too much of my time. But in the end of the day, you have to be empowered to know greatness lies within you. And nobody can make yourself complete and whole and holy and angelic and godly except you. You have a very powerful mind. We have yeah. To, yeah. We, we don't use our potential and we just become servants to the Satan. But once you become enlightened and realize that this Satan that wants you to become drowned in different pleasures, doesn't matter. Some people, I'll tell you beautiful Dvar Torah from my Rebbe, Harav Eliezer ben David, the Talmud of the Chazanish. He says, Right? God should bless you and watch over you. What is right after Hashem blesses you? So it says in the Midrash like this, Hashem, when He blesses you, it's a double-edged sword. It's very good you got blessed. But then He has to watch over you because... Imagine God blesses somebody with a billion dollars. Do you know how much bad bhakti comes to these lotto winners? They don't know they don't what to do. They don't know what to do. So it says, God should bless you, but watch over you that you shouldn't. First of all, the worst thing that could happen, even if you use the mind, invest the mo money safely, is you become Balgava. You think you think you're Khoda. All your old friends you throw in the trash. Your old you don't think this happens in our community every it day? It happened to me. You, you don't think your old cousins yeah, since I, they don't I, I, I have it to my best friend like I know this guy for like years <laughs> he came rich and then I see him in the elevator and then he doesn't say hi like, like Tony hi he <laughs> yeah. doesn't say hi to me that's why it says that's why it says Nathan when you brought so up people weird. you should have this kavana uh -huh. getting blessed but then losing you don't you, you think you, you never forget your you past. become corrupted yeah. money no, corrupts you think, no you think you, you think you're above you think you're above That's you. why it says in the bracha, when in the most important bracha that we, the you Kohanim bless us, the, the Kohanim that bless us, it's the same thing here. Guys, we are living in a society where there was never so much blessing in the world, right? Oh, I think money messed up the world. I, I, I think money... Yeah, well, when the Jews don't live in a ghetto, and when, the, when, when, it, when people have access, too much money, too much pleasure, too much... They lose it. They lose it. So that's that. One of the ways of being an abstinent person to realize is that, in the end of the day, guys, I mean, if you eat, and I'm sorry, we're we're, we're in a book, we're in a room with thousands of holy books, but in the end of the day, the more you, you eat, it, you the more it. the more you eat, the more fodder it is for the when you die after under twenty years, the, the worms are going to eat more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's there's, it's only. Medically, it's bad for you. Health-wise, it's bad for you. And it also makes you less holy the more physical you are. Hmm. 
We have to use and not abuse God's blessings. That's so it says That's why it should be disgusted. When people overindulge, it should be disgusting to you. Because it's the anti of holiness. A, ho a Jew is meant to be holy. That's why in the beginning of this chapter, when he talks about abstinence, he says, Perushim to you, another synonym for being abstinent is being holy. Because holy is a very ambiguous, what, what does it mean? Holy means you have holes in your socks. What does it mean to be holy? It's a very ambiguous term, right? So Chazal, our Chachamim, give a very concrete um, framework to it. To be holy, one of the synonyms of holiness is to be abstinent, right? You like there's you know there's you know what the Tanit of the Ravid is? The Ravid was the main arguer on the Rambam. The Ravid says, let's say you're eating your favorite food, juju kebab, oh oh oh, with all that <laughs> saffron, and then you take the last piece. You you'd love to indulge and eat it. You don't eat it. It's like you did a thousand fast. Because you're so addicted to it and you could eat it and you want to eat it. Judaism all, is all about putting the brakes. Just because there's been so many weddings, thank God, in my family and my students. Do you know one of the, you know what you one of the main, main tenets and foundations of Judaism is putting the brakes. Having this un superhuman, unnatural self-control. Do you know it? Self-control what? I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to give you the best example in the world. Uh, a Jewish boy and girl, there's something called Dam Betulim, right? So can you imagine a guy for 25 years, he's never touched a woman because he's Shomer Nagia. And the night of his wedding, the first time he sleeps with his wife, since there's the potential of Dam Betulim, for 11, 12 days, he has to separate from her. What's Madulim? What's that? Dam Betulim, I'll, I'll tell you off camera. Uh, the virginity. I, I can't, it's not the subject, but can you imagine these two people, they, they did it one time with each other, and then they, so my Rebbe, Harav Eliezer ben David, he said he was a general, he was also a big, uh, he also went to the Israeli army. He told this to the non-religious generals, they didn't believe him. But when they actually went and researched it, that this is what the Allah is, they said, it's, it's something it's something that the secular Israeli generals cannot understand how such a person could have such a noble and supernatural, you know, self-control. And it says, He says, it's all sheker, it's all false. Overindulgence is killing you. It's, it, see, that's, we, we always have to reframe what true pleasure is, you understand? If, if by you eating 10 times more uh, uh, than you need, don't think you're doing your body a favor, anybody a favor. You're making your body animalistic and it can't accept the light of Shekhinah, spirituality, right? Because you know when you eat too much, you become heavy. Yeah. Yeah. And then your body it's doesn't... Not good it's not good you get you. digestive problems, you get heartburn, you get a million different things. So it says... And we're just going to do one more chapter and finish with this because we have to go to the main class. He says, what could be more dangerous than eating? Overeating. Gluttony. Guys, there's a reason God created our mouths so small and our something is, right? We're not elephants. And it says, and at the end of the day, it just goes to the diet. It says, it's just, even the most wonderful food, which is good to have on Shabbat, but, I mean, in the, in the final analysis, how much pleasure are you having from it? Right? You taste it for a minute, and it's gone. It's it's gone. gone. It says, in the end of the day, even if you eat the most simple, simple, nutritious food, your body is the same strong. Right? And you get the same energy and strength. It says, for sure, you have to be, if you have uh, liver problems or sugar, so, so whatever the Messiah Yisharim is saying for a healthy person, if you actually have um, different, you know, sensitivities or like um, glucose and all these different things, for sure you should be more vigilant not to eat, um, you know, be very careful of what you eat. Some people have cholesterol, right? There's... 
you, you, we, we don't need to know, God forbid, how many different sicknesses are, there are, unfortunately. He says, don't think eating these um, unhealthy foods is good. The Satan is trying to trick you that it's good. But once you have use you half of your brain, you realize that these are just poison. You know? Guys, I, I'm a CPA. I took so many different... Do you realize how many billions of dollars these companies use... I no, no. They trick you <laughs> on marketing. To stuff that is like... They put artificial flavorings. They just... Oh. To make it tasty. Yeah. Which means... MSG. MSG. It's just they, they only care about their, their, their stock to go up. And the, the CEO, CEO to make 30 million a year or 20 million a year. They don't care about your health or ethics or anything. Right? It's all a trickery. So once you understand this, don't think that it's it's the whole shadow. So all the other pleasures of the world are the similar thing. Ella yitponen, think deeply, guys. I'm ashamed sometimes the things I see in our community and one of my very good neighbors from Santa Monica. I just oh my god, it's, it makes me cry. How he's going through such a nasty divorce, guys. Sometimes I see some things in our community I'm ashamed to call myself a Persian Jew. Because we just... We're not in the realm of decency anymore. You Money know? Corrupts you. And why people go to such low levels and do such outrageous, you know, and, and hurtful and... You know, so in the end of the final analysis, when... We do think deeply, you know, not on a shallow level. We we'll realize that the pleasures of this world are whether money, sex, whether delicious foods. It's just a, it's a figment of your imagination. It's not even real pleasure because the second you get it, another second, you know. I'll tell a beautiful story I heard from Stories to Inspire, Danny Avalar. It said Rabbi Krohn had gone to Israel. This story you have to hear. So th there's this organization in Israel. It brings the most secular Israelis that have tattoos and ponytails and totally. And it, so one of the, the heads, it brings them and it learns Torah with them. And they have, uh, I forgot the name of the organization. They have 40 centers now throughout Israel. Mm -hmm. So one of the leaders of them brings Rabbi Krohn, which is a very big, uh, the, we call him the Maggot of America, right? He's a very good storyteller and ethical speaker about he brings him in and he says you know i want to show you a dvd the guy has a black hat beard this guy comes out to be one of the best soccer players in the history of israel of maccabee so rabbi Krohn asked him he says you it, he there's a game that he won the game and the whole israel went crazy right because it was like the middle east world cup whatever so he says he says, I want to tell you something, Rabbi Krohn. That night that I, yes, for five seconds when I made the goal and I, my whole team hugged me and I was the telltale talk of the town in all of the state of Israel. But what did I do after that 10 minutes of glory? I got drunk. But he says, now that I'm teaching Torah, I feel so much more fulfilled. Because I, he said, he said, the pleasure that I have now, the content and happiness Guys, you have a soul. Your soul is God. This food and these worldly pleasures are animalistic. It's like, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like um, somebody that already owns the Empire State Building, you bring him Legos. Is it? Is that, like he bring him the most amazing Lego game. Yes, a kid that's 10 years old, he builds this high-rise Lego. He thinks like this is, the, you know. We have to get enlightened and realize that these physical pleasures are like baby. You have it. You could. Our our soul could get to prophecy. You could get so holy that you'll know the future. You know, and then you go and play these stupid little. You know, uh, you waste your time on these me measly. I know one rabbi told me the the pleasure the 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 pleasure in the next world. What the like like the best feeling in in this world? Yeah, yes, it's the like, taste of uh, it's just the taste of the next world. Yeah, it's not even. Yeah, exactly. So he says just to wrap this up. 
It says the Shum Baal It says anybody that actually wants to put five minutes of deep thought into this and not be shallow will realize that to be abstinent, to be more hands off, right? Not to just dig in like an animal and eat ten times or whether it's any other pleasure of this world. It's better to just smell it, taste a little, um, you know, be balanced, be, be moderation. And a lot of times when it comes to physical pleasure, less is better. Never forget that golden rule. Less is better. When you eat double the amount you need, you get you end up with a bunch of sicknesses. It shuts off your brain, you know, because you're out, you're acting like an animal. You're eating two times than you, you need. And then, food coma. And then, exactly, it's a food coma. And then you can't digest Torah. You can't digest Tefillah. You can't digest anything. And our goal in this world is to do the maximum amount of mitzvot, not the maximum amount of pleasure. Pleasure.